I am Apostle Elmo Winters, and I like to call myself uh, a chief servant of God. Uh, he's the reason why we're here. In fact, I'd like to, you to know that I'm here this morning so that we might all come together to build the kingdom of God. I want you to join me this morning. I'm inviting you again. <clears throat> call me here at the station at 225-926-6550 or 225-926-1550. Again, let me give you those numbers. 926-6550 or 926-1550, area code 225. This weekly broadcast is coming to you not to promote me, but it's to promote the principles of the book, Growing by Going. This is about building the kingdom of God. It's not even about building your church or your ministry. It's about building the kingdom of God. And because we are so concerned about that, I invite you, encourage you, do everything I can to have you make contact with us, either while we're here on the station, or you can contact us once we get off the broadcast. Always you can go to our website, www.kingdomgroup.co. You can go to our webpage, or should I say our Facebook page, which has the same name, Growing by Going. And when you go over there, we want you to like us and then share the page with someone else. This information that we are promoting is for the believers, the non-believers. We want everybody to get this information. So please do that. Go to Twitter. We have a Twitter account. It's at Kingdom Group. BR. And always you can go and subscribe or just catch us on YouTube. We have the Kingdom Group there on YouTube. You see, we're convinced about, uh, we're concerned, or committed rather, to get this information into your hands to make sure that you can be an effective witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. That's our call. That's our goal. That has to be the mandate for our lives is to go and tell somebody about the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I make myself available to you all as much as I possibly can. You can still contact me personally by calling 225-305-3006. 305-3006. Any time of the day or night, just give me a call. Or if you'd like to go to the web, uh, my, 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 my page, if you'd like to go to rather my email address, you can go to elmow1 at att.net. Thank you for considering uh, those avenues for getting in touch with me. I continue to be just simply amazed, I'm thrilled about this book, Growing by Going. It has just blessed my life. It has blessed the lives of many. I still hear from people who are telling me after reading the book what it has done for their lives. That's the reason why our goal is to get the book into the hands of as many people as possible as soon as we possibly can because there is an urgency of the hour. We must be concerned about those that are lost. We must be concerned about those who do not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. We must do more than pray for them and love them from a distance. God is calling us to come out of our comfort zones. He's calling us to come out of our churches. He's calling us to come out of the things that we just like to do and to become more involved with carrying the gospel to those who need it. We're looking forward to the next uh, year that we will be doing uh, tables, uh, book tables, in churches, in locating, uh, in places, locations rather, all over. We are looking forward to it. And we'll say, we want to come to your church. We want to come to your event. We want to come to your conference and sponsor a table at no cost to you whatsoever, just to be able to get this information out to those who must have it. We continue to uh, let you know that on March 21st, we've already been asked, we've committed to be a part of Iron Sharpened Iron Men's Conference here in the city of Baton Rouge. 
where we will have a table. We want to be there to get the information. And we encourage all of you that are listening, your churches, uh, your men, to become involved for a one-day conference where you will hear some dynamic speakers who will help you to be better for the Lord. Better this year than last year, stronger, more powerful, going ahead for the, the things of God. I've asked, invited uh, Pastor Mark Lovett to be on with us, and he'll be here in about three weeks to discuss more and get into the details of this conference as we look forward to being a blessing. Now, we do want you to know that we are available to come to your church to minister exactly the principles we're talking about from the book. We want to meet you. We want to get this information out to as many people as we possibly can uh, that you know. We want you to share the information. Uh, yes, we do want you to buy the book. Yes, we do want you to get involved. But God is calling us in this hour to do so much more for the lost than just the things that we merely do. It's time for us to get busy to build the kingdom of God. And remember, from the very beginning, I've made it clear to you that if we will get in our proper place, if we will get to the point where we are, in fact, building God's kingdom, God will begin to add to our church. He will begin to add to our ministries, and we will see genuine growth. Uh, today, I'm reminded God is really impressed upon my spirit that it's time for us to get back to the basis. Now, as we get into our routine for this new year, I want to go back to promoting this book. I want to take some time today and discuss this great book that was written by God. He used my hands, but he wrote the book to make sure you understand why we're here, what we're doing why it is important that you continue to listen, you continue to tell others to join us on Saturday morning. Uh, it is quite clear to me that the body of Christ today is doing everything but winning souls. We are not evangelizing. We are not bringing people to Jesus Christ. And I am just fully assured that the time is now that we must do this. So, for the next few minutes, I'm going to talk about the specifics of the books. The thing I call the dynamics of this book and tell you why you must have the book. And if you don't have it, the contact information I gave to you earlier, I will repeat before we finish today because I want you to make contact with me that we may get the book. In fact, if you're local and you order this book, I will do everything within my power to bring a copy to you or bring copies to you so that I might meet you and we uh, may even develop a relationship to build the kingdom of God together. Uh, again, my goal in taking this time this morning is to help you understand your work, how it is to be done, how it's not as hard as the devil can make it be sometime, and how we can work together to do it. Again, we want you, yes, to get the book. So you'll have the material readily available. You can go back to it. You can learn every time you open the book. You can pray. You can bless the book. And I'm asking some of you all to join me in that. Pray over the book. Pray that God will open doors that we may be able to share this information worldwide because it's too big of a task for one person to do. Let's talk about the book. And I want you to paint a picture in your mind as I give you the uh, dimensions and dynamics of this book. This cover I'm looking at is a very colorful cover, which was professionally done by our publishing company. We want you to understand this is not something that we wrote in-house and went out and just put it together and printed it. It is professionally published by our publisher. Uh, the book is only 103 pages, making it a quick read. You can sit in one setting and read the book. You can, in fact, take two or three, maybe four hours, five hours, depending on your reading speed, and uh, read the book. Now, I do say you will need to come back to the book over and over to just capture more of the steps 
understanding why we're doing it, understanding what to say and how to approach those that are lost. That's what this is. In fact, some have considered it to be like a manual, a training manual for reaching people for Jesus Christ. But it's a small book. Uh, it will take you very little time to read it. And when you see it, I think you'll be very impressed with its presentation. And that's what's very, very important. So it's only 103 pages. It's a quick read. But let's talk about it a little bit further. It contains basically three sections in the book. First of all, there is the personal witnessing steps that I have really emphasized over and over and over. There are five basic steps, and we'll, we're going to go over them again in the coming weeks. I've spent some time uh, last year talking about them. I want to do that again because you need to understand uh, the specifics of the steps and how to reach people with them. Uh, then there's another section. It's steps for the special cases in witnessing because we have learned that all witnessing will not go as smoothly as we'd like. It will not go as we have planned. So we need to have a few steps in case things do not go as, as God has planned immediately. And then there are specifics of what I consider to be the sinner's prayer. Uh, if nothing else, this will teach the body of Christ how we lead people in a sincere prayer to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, contained in Growing by Going, uh, first of all, are endorsements. And I'm very proud of the endorsements that we have. There are people who have read the book, and not only read the book, but they have rated the book. They have talked about how it's blessed their lives, how it's blessed their ministries. That's why those endorsements are on the first two pages of the book. And you'll be able to read those immediately. Get a little bit of feel about what the book has done for some others. Beyond that point, and starting with uh, page number 11, we have what I look at being the really focus of this work. It comes to us, and it's the scriptural focus of the work. It comes to us from John chapter 15 and verse 16. And we have quoted it many times, but we never, ever get tired of doing it. Because it gives us the mandate from God as to what we are supposed to do as believers. The Bible says, John 15, verse 16, that ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, it may hear of, it may give it you. Very clearly, Jesus is saying to us, we are, yes, a chosen generation. We are a special people. But we can never say we have chosen him. He chose us. Not only that, but he has appointed us he has ordained us, given us a duty, given us a work that must be done by us that we may go out and make others like ourselves, make other disciples, make other believers, get people to understand that the only hope we have is Jesus Christ. And that in doing so, we ensure God's blessings and the answer to our prayers in our lives. Now, I challenge you who are listening, go to your Bible, whatever translation you like, whatever version of the Bible that you like, go to it. Take a look at John chapter 15 and verse 16. In fact, I would challenge you to read the whole 15th chapter of John. It could very well motivate you to stay connected to the Lord Jesus Christ and do the will of the Father. Now, beyond that point, we get into, as most books would have, a table content. But I'm very proud of page 15 in our book that contains a foreword. Now, this foreword is contained in the most uh, recent printings of the book. It comes from a dear friend of mine, uh, Bishop Ewer Ford, a man I've known for 25 plus years, who read the book, believes in the book, 
Belief said, this is what the body of Christ must have in this hour. And wrote the foreword, and I am encouraged. I'm inspired every time I read it. I thank God Almighty that the man of God who has traveled worldwide, who has seen countless thousands come to Christ, truly believe in what God has done in this book. Now, beyond that point, we get into a part that I kind of call the taking it to the street. It's a wonderful section that goes right into personal witnessing. That's right, personal witnessing. It has to do with what you and I are to be doing every day of our lives. In our homes, in our communities, in the workplace, everywhere we go. Remember that song we sang back in the church? We should let our light so shine. Uh, this light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Well, that's what we're talking about. Witnessing for the Lord Jesus Christ because he is the light of our lives. And he's in us. And wherever I go, people should see that light. And then when those come and ask me, why are you so full of joy? Why do you seem to always be upbeat? Why are you feeling good all the time? We have an open door to tell them it's all because of Jesus and what God has done in my life. Now, you go into the part of personal witnessing, and I must say this about taking it to the street. One of the things that's, that's so very big here, uh, we are motivated by a number of, of verses of Scripture that tell us that uh, this is the will of God for our lives. There's no doubt that God wants you to say a word for him wherever you go. Uh, parents should be speaking this to our children, our grandchildren. We ought to be speaking this to our family members, especially those that you know are not saved. We must give them the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ so that they will have an opportunity to have the change of life that you have had. As we go through the book and we get through the five steps, and I want everyone to understand as you go through this book, you read the book, you start to digest the material that's in the book. Every step contains uh, parts of, of what you should do in that step. Like it actually says what to do, tells you specifically what to do. Then in the step is given the basis of the step. Why are we using that particular verse of scripture? Why are we taking this approach? And then I have included in the book a section where you can make your personal notes so that you will have information that has touched you, that you can relate to, you can go back to, and make the book personal. It is a personal book. This is personal witnessing. Uh, there may be things in your life or testimonies that you will want to share with someone else, especially if they're living a life like maybe you lived once before yourself. Well, you can go and tell them, I used to do this. I used to be bound up by this. I once lived this life. But look at what God has done in my life today. I often say that one of the greatest tools for witnessing is our testimonies. What has God done for you? Maybe in lieu of a bunch of verses of scripture, we can share that I once was on drugs. I once was an alcoholic. I used to do this and I used to do that. But look at my life today. Look what God has done for me. And it's always a good point to make it clear to people that God is a good God. He's not a God that uh, is, is, is respectful of a person because what he's done for me, he'll do for you. That should be very, very big as you're witnessing to others. Let them know you are not the uh, exception to the situation. You're not unique, but God is able to deliver you because he did it for me. In the book, Beyond That Point, we cover three additional steps because you will find that there are those who will challenge your testimony. They will challenge the scriptures. There are those who believe, and I've said this many times in the past, there are those who simply believe that uh, they're doing all right. 
They have arrived. Their lives are not that bad. And they will tell you often, I'm not bad as though people who go down, go to that church down the street. I'm not as bad as this person or that person. But what must they understand is this. According to the word of God, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Regardless of status, regardless of stuff, regardless of respect, regardless of whatever, we all have come to this place where we need Jesus. So it's important that these three additional steps are at least looked at, considered, because you will need to say them or use them in some situations. And then I have included uh, in the book just uh, the three parts of the sinner's prayer. And one of the things I start off with as I talk about the sinner's prayer, because of the biblical uh, knowledge of so many people, I explain that we do not see a demonstration of a sinner's prayer in the Bible per se. However, God has given us scriptures that we can use that will support uh, a sinner's prayer. There should be a way that people can come to Jesus. It just doesn't happen automatically. There has to be a way, a, a time of repentance for your sin. That's one of the steps. Uh, there has to be a way for us to invite the Lord Jesus Christ into our hearts. In fact, I use Revelation 3 and 20 there where we talk about, Behold, he's standing at the door and he's knocking and he's knocking and he's knocking. And he's actually seeking to come in. But he can't come into your heart until you invite him in. And always when we pray, be it sinner's prayer or any other prayer, I believe we ought to thank God. Thank him for what he's doing in our lives. That makes up the sinner's prayer. And we've completed the book with a little bio on the author, as we talked about, uh, who wrote the book, a little bit about my background, a little bit about what God has done in my life in the few years I've been on the earth. And I thank God for that. Go out and get this book. You need the book today. If you're going to witness to hundreds of people this year, you need to know how it is best done. And you must use the tools that God has made available to you. The book is one of the best tools I have ever seen. But, you know, as I think about heaven and I think about people that are lost, I think about people that need a Savior I'm concerned this morning about someone who may be listening to our broadcast. This could be your first time. And for somebody, it might be the last time. We don't know. But we do know that we have this time right now to consider the question, if we die today, are we positive beyond a shadow of a doubt is that we would go and be with the Lord Jesus. We've been taught from a child that when you die, you're either going to go to one place and be eternally with the devil, or go to the better place and be with the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you cannot say today, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I'm going to go and be with the Lord Jesus eternally, then this question is big for you. If you're not sure about your salvation, it doesn't mean that you're not a good church person. It doesn't mean you haven't been baptized. But unfortunately, those things do not save us. Those are the things that we do after we're saved. But if you are not sure there was a time in your life when you asked Jesus to come into your heart, come into your life and save you, then this morning, I beg you, I do, to ask him into your heart and into your life today. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? If you say yes, then we can pray the prayer. Do you believe that Jesus Christ died at Calvary and was buried, and on the third day he rose again? If your answer is yes, then we can pray this prayer. If you're not sure those things, I am encouraging you, call me. If you still have a question about Jesus Christ being the Son of God, make the phone call. If you got a question about whether or not he truly died and rose again, 
call me. I will show you in scripture and take you through the word that will help you understand. But in the meantime, I'm going to invite you who may be listening this morning to pray this prayer with me. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, today I understand that I am a sinner. I am sorry for my sins. And I repent of my sins. Dear Jesus, come into my heart. Come into my life. And save me today. Thank you, dear God, for my new life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Very simple prayer. You probably don't feel any different than you did before praying the prayer. But it's based on this fact. That if you ask Jesus to come into your heart today. Believing that he is the son of God. Believing that he died at Calvary and he rose from the grave the third day. He came into your heart you're saved right now. Saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. A new creature in Christ. And as a result, all of heaven is rejoicing today. And I thank you for taking that bold step of praying the prayer that has changed your destiny. And thank God for that. I want to hear from you. Again, let me remind you, you can call me personally at 225-305-3006. You can go to my email address. That's elmo, E-L-M-O-W-1, at att.net. You can go to our webpage, www.kingdomgroup.co. Go to our Facebook page, Kingdom Group, or should I say Growing by Going? That is the Facebook page, like us. Leave a comment. Uh, follow us on Twitter. That's Kingdom Group BR, or at Kingdom Group BR. And then go over to YouTube and you can hear this message again, or hear the one you missed last week, or hear the one you missed the week before we are available. But I want to hear from you. I want to take the last few minutes of our time together. And number one, invite you to be with us at Faith Bible Church. It's at 1292 Cardinal Street in the Scotland Veer area, right off of Scenic Highway. And we ask you to come out, fellowship with us. We're there every Sunday morning at 930. And then every Thursday night, we have a powerful Bible study that starts at 7 o'clock. That's Faith Bible Church. Looking for you to be with us in the morning at the hour of 930. We pray that you will join us. We pray that you will be with us. And that God would bless your life. We give God glory, honor, and praise today because of you who have been with us for what God has done. We look forward to being back with you again in the coming week. And definitely, we just pray that God would continue to direct you to somebody who needs the Lord Jesus Christ. May his blessings continue to be in your life. And remember, contact us. We can help you. Get the book. Get the word out. Get to somebody who needs the Lord Jesus Christ. Until we're with you again, God bless you. We'll see you next week, or we'll hear you, or we'll let you hear us next week. And to God be glory, honor, and praise. Thank you.